yeah, I made the decision in the end to stay and um, to improve more, try and get in the team, play some games, gain some more experience and, um, yeah, try and um, get back to the levels I was last season. Real thrill here on Chelsea Mic'd Up to be joined by Fakayo Tamori, center back for Chelsea Football Club. He's been uh, in the news in recent times. And Fakayo, I do want to start uh, with your recent decision uh, to stay with the club. Uh, you very nearly uh, went on a couple of loans, either to, to West Ham or to Everton. Ultimately, uh, what was the idea behind staying with Chelsea? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, I had a plan going into um, this season, um, going off the back of last season. and. Um, Obviously, in football, things change so quickly. Um, so, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that whatever decision I made was really thought out and, um, you know, try and do what's best for me. And um, other than stuff happens, but um, yeah, I made the decision in the end to stay and um, to improve more, try and get in the team, play some games, gain some more experience, and um, yeah, try and um, get back to the levels I was last season. Can you just take the listener, I think, in America, we have some understanding of how transfers work, but uh, not a full and complete understanding. Yeah. When you're making this decision, uh, it's, it's towards the end of the transfer window. You could go, you could stay. Um, how does it go down? What, how did you find out about a potential move? And, and ultimately, what was your, your aspect of having to decide how things went? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I tried as much as I can to, um, as I said, do what was best for me. And the way transfers are... Um, you know, some, some days it's up here and you have, you know, you feel like it's all rolling and then sometimes it's, you know, nothing's happening at all and you've just got to kind of do the situation you're put in. And, um, yeah, for me, uh, it was very much, um, you know, as I said, I wanted everything to be thought out and I thought about what was happening and, um, you know, especially, um, you know, when we had the, the few weeks off and leading up, in, um, leading up into the season, um, the small pre-season that we had, um, I was very talking a lot with my, with my agent and the club trying to, you know, clarify and get some clarity on what was going on. And, um, you know, transfers, uh, I think for me personally, I'd, I'd prefer if it wasn't last minute, um, you know, but as I said, stuff happens and, um, you know, situations happen where you have to make a decision quickly. And, um, yeah, in this instance, it was one of those situations. Um, and as I said, yeah, as you all know, I, I made the decision to stay. Of course. And when you tell Frank Lampard, when you tell uh, the club hierarchy that you want to stay, what, what was their reaction? I imagine uh, Frank was probably pleased that you wanted to fight for your place in the squad. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was sort of like that. I mean, he knows that, you know, there's a big squad here and, um, you know, it is definitely a, a competitive squad, more competitive last year. You know, we've, we've watched him some, um, some amazing players and, um, yeah, I'm sure that, uh, you know, the manager is looking forward to working with every single player and trying to get us to gel as much as we can and, um, yeah, try and get results on the board and, you know, close that gap to the top of the table. When you, you do fight for your place in this team and you make the decision to do so, you do so with the club having signed Thiago Silva, uh, keeping you know Rudiger and Christensen and Zuma. There's a lot of competition at your position. With Thiago Silva in particular, I wanted to ask about having a player of his experience who's achieved what he's achieved. You haven't had too much time. He's away with Brazil and, and now just getting back into the side. But uh, from the limited experience you've had with a player like Thiago Silva, what is it like to have someone who's done so much and clearly has such a mastery of the position in the team? Yeah, I mean, you can tell, you know, even though he doesn't speak a lot of English, but you can tell, um, you know, the way he drives himself and drives those around him, um, you know, on the training pitch and on the match days as well. Um, you know, you can see why, you know, he's reached the levels that he has. And, um, you know, even though I'm not able to communicate with him that well, um, you know, I can watch what he does and, and you know, see how professional he is. You know, you always see him in the gym, you know, looking after his body and, um, you know, making sure that he's right for the games. And, um, you know, yeah, I'm sure that, of course, you know, what he's done in the past, you know, is going to transfer into what, what he's doing here. And I'm sure it's going to help all of us. When I was researching for this interview, I was obviously looking at, at your past. You were born in Canada, and you had the chance to play for Canada. You featured for them in, in a few youth sides, but eventually, I mean, you've been in England for most of your life, and you decided to play mm -hmm. uh, for the English national team. That feels like the more difficult path. There are more high-quality center backs in England than there are in Canada. You'd probably be yeah. the first choice in Canada every week in, we, or in every international break. What ultimately, mm -hmm. you seem to err on the side of going for big challenges. Is that kind of the way that, that you approach that decision too? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, I think that, you know, you have to be ambitious and, um, you know, it, it was, um, you know, when I, when it came to making the decision to, to switch, you know, when I was younger, and it wasn't something I took lightly and it was something that I really did think about. And, um, uh, 
even though you know I, I, I got called up to Canada first and then England called me up you know it wasn't just a switch like oh yeah okay I'm gonna go to, to Canada it was, I mean to England it was more you know very thought out and I thought you know maybe this this could be um this could be the pathway there could be a pathway for me here and um you know obviously you know England is such a such a um, top national team that you know the competition is what brings out the best in every single person and I think that having that kind of aspiration to get to that you know team where you know they're always going to be expected to do well in world cups expected to do well in european championships um you know that having that having that pressure and that um that pressure to do well is something that i think that um i thrive in thrive under so um yeah i think that uh going for the challenges you know you know the bigger the challenge you know the greater the reward probably, i guess so um yeah that's that's um that's my that's my mentality for so when you were play, you did play for Canada's youth player, and I'm curious what your relationship is. You were born there, but you moved to England at a very young age. What is your relationship with Canada? And I, it does feel like there was a moment. So Canada actually beat England in a youth match. You, I think, captain the side on that day. Yeah. It kind of feels like in that moment, someone in the England camp must have gone, wait a second, he can play for us. Why is he playing for them? Uh, what, what's kind of your relationship with Canada and, and how often have you been back? Obviously, you know, in, in COVID times, it's difficult to imagine that happening anytime soon. But uh, what is your relationship with the, the country in which you were born? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, from when I was born to maybe up until I was about maybe 15, 16, um, up until I was, you know, full-time football. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my family and I used to go back every year. We have a lot of family and friends there. So every year we'd go to Canada, um, you know, see, see family and friends go to places that we hadn't actually been to in Canada before. And um, yeah, uh, you know, I, I feel, you know, even though I don't have an accent or anything like that, but you know, I still, still feel like I'm Canadian. I feel like I have an affiliation there and, um, and, and, I've, and I've explored the country a lot. So it, it, there, there is, you know, a current Canadian national team player and Alfonso Davies, who's, you know, been brilliant. And that national team program is really coming along. Jonathan David uh, is, is playing in Europe as well. Um, do you kind of recognize that that opportunity probably looks a bit different now than it might have then? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, when, when I first joined the, the Canada youth system, um, you know, Alfonso was, what, 15? And, yep. um, you know, I remember when he first got called up, uh, you know, there was a lot of people talking about him and... Um, you know, I got this 15 year old, I was what, 18, 19 at the time, something like that. And, um, you know, we shared a room and, uh, and you know, I was thinking, oh, sharing a room with a 15 year old, it was a bit weird. And then, you know, when, when you got on the pitch and stuff, you know, you saw how good he was. And then maybe a few years later, three years later, he's moving to Bayern Munich. And, you know, that was like, wow. So, um, you know, I, I definitely, you know, know that it's getting bigger and, you know, football is getting a lot uh, more competitive there, which is, which is good, obviously. And, um, you know, obviously I wish them all the best. Uh, I, I want to go through your journey a little bit. So you joined, you joined the Chelsea Academy at age seven, uh, and then you come all the way through. Just from a big picture standpoint, that's incredible, right? I mean, I imagine so many kids that were involved in Chelsea at your age or maybe even out of football now, never mind, not even playing in the Premier League with Chelsea. When you do mm -hmm. look back on what you've achieved so far, obviously there's still so much yet to go. But the fact that you are here, that you were one of the – players that came through does that add that special bit of meaning that you know 16 years later you're, you're still involved in the Chelsea setup yeah I mean is there, there's there's times where I do think sit back and I think and think like wow you know I've been here when I was seven and there were this many kids and then on the eights on the nines tens elevens of 13 all day through and you have so many players you know players that you see like you're thinking wow I didn't know there were you know people this good and then for me to be, you know, in the position that I am now, um, you know, it's surreal and it's a dream because, you know, Chelsea is, you know, one of the best clubs in Europe, best clubs in England, you know, best clubs in the world. So the fact that I'm here and I can say that I, I'm a Chelsea player is, um, it is, a, it is a dream. And um, you know, as I said, looking back and thinking about all the players that I've seen, I've played with, played against even um, later on down the, down the line, and as you said, some of them out of football, some of them playing. Not lower, lower down the levels or wherever it may be. Um, you know, the fact that I'm here is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a privilege, and um, yeah, I'm thankful. Uh, Want to get to your first goal in the Premier League was an incredibly memorable one. Was Chelsea goal of the season a year ago? Mm -hmm. uh, that goal against Wolves. Can you just take us through how that moment develops, how, how it builds up, and then obviously the euphoria you must have felt after it goes in. Yeah, I mean, as the ball was coming to me, I just kind of thought, um, nah, I need to be. I had to try and keep it on target, make sure my foot is behind the ball and 
you know, I, I, I almost in a way played it safe um, in the sense that, you know, I didn't want to, you know, put my laces through the ball and it go, you know, sailing out the stadium. And, um, you know, the days before in training, Willie Caballero, I'm sure everyone's heard this. Um, you know, he was, um, he was teasing me and making fun of me, saying that, you know, I was lacing the ball and it was going over the net and stuff like that. So this one, as the ball rolled into me, I was just thinking, OK, I just had Willie's head, um, voice in my head, decided to side foot it and it just... <laughs> It just flew into the net and um yeah from there we just that was just emotion that was just happiness so um yeah that was that was great be honest how, how many times have you watched it back since it happened oh many many times many times many times i'll never get tired of it never <laughs> every time it gets retweeted into your timeline it's like i, I get just one more time just one more time yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> Tremendous. Uh, I want to ask about one thing before I let you go. So I was doing a bunch of research for this interview, and I had completely forgotten that this happened uh, a few years ago. Uh, you actually broke Diego Costa's nose on the <laughs> ground uh, with, with yeah. an elbow. Uh, can you just describe like what happens in that moment? I imagine you're just sort of uh, in a training session, and this thing happens, and all of a sudden the star striker at Chelsea has a broken nose. He had to go, I think, to Milan to get a, to, uh, to get a face. Mm. Uh, what was that moment like for you? I, I actually remember it, it was, um, the, the, there was a shot and um, I, was, well, I was in the youth team at this point, I had a 23s and there was a shot and the ball went up in the air, the keeper saved it, the ball went up in the air. So he's trying to score and I'm trying to head it that way. So I've won the header and then he's headed the back of my head and he's, he was on the floor screaming and I was kind of like, oh, I thought we just banged heads, I didn't know it was his nose. And then the next day I went to school, <laughs> um, like my normal school and um, you know, suddenly I was getting all these things on Twitter. People are sending me this newspaper thing saying, oh, the kind of tomorrow you break, so I did, of course, I was, I was like, <laughs> and the first thing that went to mind is that I broke his nose. I, di I didn't know I broke his nose. And then I was thinking, how did they know it was me? <laughs> so it was, it was so confusing. And obviously, you know, uh, back then I was, what, maybe 16, 17. So I was a bit like, oh, I hope that <laughs> this doesn't, you know, is it doesn't reflect negatively on me. But um, yeah, obviously it was a total accident. And um, yeah, it's just it's something that, um, I think I will always be around me somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I honestly, it was deep in an article about actually your Canada career that I, that I found this. But yeah, that's, that, yeah. that must have been a, a little bit of a moment. It's like, wait a second, you know, is, is this going to cause a problem for me? But uh, in the end, yeah, all, yeah. Uh, you're on your way in, in the Chelsea first team. And Fakayo, very much appreciate the time. And uh, best of luck this season. Hopefully uh, your decision to stay uh, gets rewarded and you get a bunch of playing time. And uh, Chelsea have plenty of success on the field. Hopefully so. Thank you.